What's up guys, Belligerent here with a new Pal World video. What if I told you this Pal behind me was the single most useful Pal you could possibly have for your breeding needs? That's right, seemingly useless, just legs, eggs, and can't be bred by any combination of Pals other than themselves, Chickpea is the single most useful Pal in Pal World when it comes to breeding for traits. This method I created for myself, I call the Chickpea Method allows us to breed a POW with reusable traits and IVs, and then pass it on to nearly any POW that we want to breed for with those traits. No more searching for a specific POW with specific traits that make up the correct breeding combination. All you need are chickpeas. Let's jump into this. Remember, if this video helps, a like is free for you and super helpful for me and greatly appreciated. If you want to get more videos like this, make sure to smash that subscribe button to get notified when new videos are released. All right. This is one of my breeding chickpeas. This chickpea is what I theory crafted to be the best passive skills for a worker pal. I'm in the process of breeding different combinations to test and figure out what is truly the best combination. And I'll be sure to drop a video to explain my findings when I do. But for now, this is what I'm using. So any species of pal that I want to turn into a worker, whether that's my Verdash or an Anubis or numerous other species that will be helpful for working scenarios, I'll use this chickpea to pass down the traits. To understand how this works, let's jump over to the breeding website that I introduced you to in my past video. The reason Chickpea works for this reusable method that I'm about to show you is that it can literally path into every single pal in the game with the exception of six pals. The special Gumas, Jormantide Ignis, which can only, those two can only be bred by two of their own species. And then the four legendary pals, which are pretty much the same thing. They can only be bred by two of their own species, which are Frost Stallion, Jet Jaget, Jet Dragon, Necromus, and Palladius. I'm going to use the shortest path calculator that I showed you before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to scroll through this and just show you that there is a result for every single pal except for the ones that I named. As you can see here, if we wanted Anubis, we do Chickapea, bred to Suzaku, gives us Patalia, and then Patalia plus Peering gives us Anubis or several other different options some of them are a little bit more difficult to get some of them are going to require some of the legendary pals and stuff like that so i'm not saying it's easy to path a chickpea into everything but it is possible okay so i'm going to scroll through this and you will see here that everything except for the ones that i mentioned have some kind of result again the results you can come to this website and check out yourself but the results are here as we make our way through this you'll see that it just keeps going and going and going and this is what makes chickpea so strong is that it can literally path into almost every single pal in the game so we can put we can make collections of traits that we want and use that and now you see we made it to the bottom of the list nearly everything had a result before some of you call me out in the comments i want to clarify something about this list okay and as it says right here can't guarantee they're exhaustive okay there are four scenarios or there are four situations where it looked like chickpea didn't pass in or path into them but i'm going to show you that it actually does so blossom up was the first one it says there's no path okay but so if we go up here and we find blossom up Right, typically, Blossom Up, because of where it is on the list of breeding powers, can only be bred to itself, similar to Chicopee, because Chicopee is on the exact opposite end. But this one has a special uh, interaction with, if you breed a Blossom Up to a Suzaku Aqua, you can get another Blossom Up 
And what that means is if we can breed Suzaku Aqua with Chicopee, then we can again pass traits on to a Blazamut by doing that. So if we come down here and we look, Suzaku Aqua, oh wait, we can't do that one either, but can we? Suzaku Aqua takes Jormantide plus Suzaku. Can we path into those? We most certainly can. Now, I'm not saying that it's easy. It requires a Blasma, requires a Shadow Beak, and you know a couple of those uh, combinations. But because we can uh, path into a Jormantide, or because we can path into a Suzaku, again requires kind of a difficult couple there to get a hold of Shadow Beak and Frost Stallion knocked. But because we can do that, we can then path into Suzaku Aqua, which means we could ultimately, once we capture a Blazamut or get one from an egg, we could breed a Suzaka Aqua with the traits that we want, starting with the Chicopee that already has the traits that we want, breed down into the Suzaku Aqua, and therefore it would allow us to spec out the Blazamut the way that we want. Okay. Another one that was on here was the Frost Stallion Knocked. And you're like, well, that's a legendary. Of course, that doesn't have a path. Okay. But does it? How do we get Frost Stallion Knocked? Well, of course, obviously, you're going to need a Frost Stallion. But Frost Stallion plus Helzifer will get you Frost Stallion Knocked. So the question is, can we path into Helzifer? With Chicopee, we absolutely can. Again, not the easiest thing. Requires some Blossomuts, requires some Shadow Breaks, Dormant, right? There, there's doable ones. This one, right off the top of my head, probably looks Quick Galance. Looks like this one might be the most doable. These ones are kind of, you know, require you to already have Frost Stallion Knock. Uh, but we can path into a Helzifer. So therefore, we can path into a Frost Stallion Knock. Okay. Another one. That was on the list was that didn't have a path was Ozerk. Ozerk, no path between Chicopee and Ozerk, but is that accurate? Relaxosaurus and Grizzbolt. Well, I'm pretty sure that we can do at least one of those. Let's find Relaxosaurus. Yes, we can path in from Chicopee into Relaxosaurus. Therefore, we can use this Relaxosaurus that gets the traits and stuff from Chicopee to then go into a Grizzbolt, which would get us an Ozerk. So you can see how this path calculator is missing some of the options, but indeed you can do what I told you you can do. Uh, and that is, those were the four that showed up that I didn't already tell you about that weren't the legendaries, the special Gumas or the Jormantide Ignis. So now that I have showed you that this does indeed work, let me walk you through what this looks like. Before we go through the process, I do want to touch on one thing, and that's tower bosses. Now I'm going to be honest. I am not fully clear on this point as to whether or not we are supposed to have the tower bosses. Okay. I know there is a bug that currently makes them ridiculously easy to capture. But the fact that you can use them, interact with them, and breed with them seems to indicate that it wasn't intended that you can capture them. Probably just not with the bug that makes it as easy as it does to capture them. Now, if you're wondering what I mean by tower boss this is what i mean right here is the zoe and grizzbolt this was captured out of the tower this is not a wild caught grizzbolt and i believe when you go catch them in the wild it just says grizzbolt it does not say zoe and grizzbolt plus he has obscene amounts of health that's how you also know that it's a tower boss okay. so you don't have to use one of these if using the bug or something makes you uncomfortable about whether or not you should have one. I understand that. You don't have to have one. You can just go hunt chickpeas to find the traits that you want. But what I do want to touch on 
is that having and using a tower boss makes getting traits on chickpeas easy because understand that the way the breeding works is any pal with exception of maybe a couple of the special combinations but any pal bred with a tower boss gives you a chickpea as you just saw me hatch okay so you can find literally any pal that you have that has a trait you might want it doesn't matter whether that pal paths into the pal you're trying to breed or not so you we come here and we say oh we want dragon killer i can throw this solera ray into the breeding pen with my tower boss and breed them until i get a chickpea with this dragon killer trait or passive skill sorry from the solera ray so i just wanted to touch on that and make that clear if you have a tower boss this works even better but it's not required you can just run around and go hunt chickpeas okay so what i wanted to achieve and in, in this example that i'm going to give you is i was going to start making my anubis workers they're very strong especially for mining ore things like that so i wanted to build some anubis with these great worker traits so Back to the website. Chickpea is the parent. Anubis is the desired child. And as you can see, there are lots of options to get from Chickpea to Anubis. Obviously, you would want to go through this list and figure out what you have, which pals you have, what you can use, or what you might be able to create through breeding or go capture if you want. Uh, some of these I just kind of like, I don't have a shadow beak yet. I don't have a frost stallion yet. I don't have a jet Rigan yet. Uh, so some of those legendary combinations, I just kind of pass over. Uh, I went through and I found one, which was this one right here. Chickpea plus Suzaku. I happened to find a Suzaku in an egg while I was out in the desert. So I paired up Suzaku with my chickpea that had all of the traits that I wanted. And we bred a Patalia. Now, I'm not saying that this is easy or instant. Passing on the passive skills is RNG. So you may or may not get it right away. You might have to breed 20 of them to, fi to finally get the combination that you want. But with enough breeding, you will eventually get the one with all of the traits. And we got ours right here. You see it here. And then we took that Patalia and we bred it to a Ragnarok, which gives us our Anubis. And then after many, many instances of breeding Patalia with Ragnarok, we ended up pairing it down to some Anubis that had at least parts of the traits. And then we started, I had two or three different pairs of Anubis plus the Patalia and the Ragnarok all breeding because when it comes to breeding for these passive skills it's mostly just a matter of time it's all rng and all it is is just how many cakes are you going to have to use how many times are you going to have to breed them so i just keep breeding and breeding and breeding until i get the result i want which you see right here we finally got our anubis with those traits i do hope this helped let me know in the comments below what you think remember to like comment subscribe and tell a friend i'm belligerent peace